Hey everybody, happy Sunday morning. Good morning to y'all, wherever you are. Uh, Tommy here with CRISPR Talk, reminding you I'm not a financial advisor, of course, so don't take anything I say or show you as a recommendation to buy or sell any security, because you know darn well it's not. Everything I express here is just my own opinion. So the status quo is not good enough for Intelli Therapeutics. No, it's not. What do we mean by that? Well, a few days ago, I made this video about Intellia's news and Beam's news, Intellia making a collaboration with uh, Kai Verna. And in the video and in the comment section, I talked about electroporation and the, um, the electroporation of cells, and the, which causes double-stranded breaks, which can lead to DNA translocations and all that mess. Nobody else seems to be talking about this, um, except for Intellia. Nobody else is showing data on it except for Intellia, although CRISPR Therapeutics did mention that they have 1% translocation in their cells. So Bill, one of our um, faithful watchers, has been watching the channel like, pretty much from the start, I think. Uh, Bill asked a very good question. Do you think LNP technology could be used for ex vivo instead of electroporation? I thought that was a great question. Lily Deng um, answered, Centelli is already doing it, and gave a quote from the last conference call, which was in November. All right, and I responded saying, this is one of the factors that separates Centelli from the pack. But what are we talking about here? What is Lily Deng talking about here? And that is this. That is NTLA 5001. I've already made a video on this many months ago. This is Centelli's uh, uh, T-cell therapy. It is not a CAR T. It's not a chimeric antigen receptor T-cell. It is a Wilms Tumor 1 specific T-cell receptor T-cell therapy. And it is an autologous therapy. It is not allogeneic. I forget if I said that before. But basically, here is what it is. So, to overcome manufacturing difficulties often seen in autologous cell therapies, we developed a robust electroporation free that's the key here. The status quo is that everybody does electroporation. Beam does it. I'm sure CRISPR Therapeutics does it. Everybody does it. So Intellia swims upstream and does something different. Why? To try to reduce the amount of DNA translocations. All right. Functionally closed system manufacturing process. I think what they mean by that is that they can do it all by themselves. They need no outside help. I think that's what they mean. Someone can correct me. Um, so the manufacturing process begins right here with the enrichment of the T-cells from the patient, all right, to facilitate an optimum CD8, CD4 ratio. So after incubation, the T-cells are stimulated, followed by disruption of TCR beta chain by CRISPR-Cas9 via an LNP containing its specific guide RNA for that site, all right? Then, right here, TCR alpha is subsequently knocked out. So it is a sequential thing. It's not simu simultaneous. Um, TCR alpha is se sequentially knocked out in the same manner using LNP containing its specific guide RNA and all. Then, after the track locus, they, they d deliver Wilms Tumor 1 TCR, T cell receptor, transgene using AAV6 for site-specific integration into the TCR using homology directed repair, right? That's the same thing that graphite does, all right? So they flip it in, in a very specific spot. Unlike what other people do in, in, in this situation, for example, Beam Therapeutics uses lentiviral insertion, which is non-specific. It can go in anywhere. That's the same thing that uh, Bluebird does, right? Uh, it can go in anywhere. So this is very specific. And it uses AAV instead of lentiviral insertion. So, to date, the clinical scale production using healthy donors, six of them, they average 9.2 days in length. It takes uh, about that long to, to do the whole process. I'm not sure how that compares to other autologous processes. I did some reading and saw that some people can get it down as low as seven days. Some people take 10 or 11. So, I think this is right around, you know, the time that other folks do it. And they can make uh, 24 times 10 to the ninth total T cells with an average viability of 93%. All right. And so this shows the cartoon of what they're doing the uh, TCR beta, TCR alpha knockout. Then they um, insert via AAV their Wilms tumor one. We'll get to that in a bit, what that is specific uh, TCR. All right. And they show the viability process, days of culture. 
you know, 90% or something. After, after electroporation, a lot of cells do die. That's what they're showing here. And they're showing that they can expand them with the different donors. Um, they're, you know, 1 times 10 to 10, 10 to 10, 2, 3. And then here they're showing um, low translocation events. So uh, um, percent of live cells, 100%, uh, 50% have the actual TCR. And I looked this up in some papers. What was the efficiency of other uh, CAR t of some CAR T cells? And a lot of CAR T cells, I think, are getting in, in the 30s, 35 percent have the actual receptor. Here, with their Wilms tumor one T cell receptor, they're at about 50 percent. So I think that's pretty good. Um, but I haven't looked at a lot of papers to see what everybody's getting. That was just a glance. And then to look at DNA translocation, they're using uh, droplet digital PCR, which is a really cool technique. And unedited cells, they have very little, almost non-existent translocated cells, of course. Untransduced edited cells, they're at about 0 0.005, 0 0.006. Once again, CRISPR therapeutics had 1%. So here we're talking 0 0.005, you know. That's a heck of a lot less. And then in the final product, NTLA5001 transduced, looking at about point, you know, 0 0.005, right? And here's the order in which they do it, you know. Um, track alpha, track beta, or beta first and then alpha doesn't make much, a diff much of a difference, it appears, in the final product. So, you know, teletherapeutics is spending a lot of time on this translocation stuff, developed a whole new protocol with LMP ex vivo to deal with it, to try to make the best cells possible, which I think will become very, very important in the immediate future. So, wh wh what are we talking about here? Well, NTLA5001 is an autologous T-cell treatment for AML. Um, it, it, its target is Wilms tumor 1 peptide target. Uh, it, it, it is electroporation free, and it is, the IND has already been approved, and it's in early stage clinical trials now. So, Wilms tumor is a oncogenic zinc finger transcription factor. It is expressed to minimal levels in healthy cells, but is greatly overexpressed, so it's oncogenic, overexpressed in leukemia, of course, until he's working with AML. But it's also seen in solid tumors, mesothelioma, glioblastoma, uh, many GI cancers, and ovarian cancers. All right. What's important here is that the epitope of Wilms tumor zinc finger protein that Intelli is going after is this, epitope 37 to 45. It's called the v VLD epitope. And the, the amino acid sequence is VLD FAPPGA. But it's at residues 37 to 45 of the protein. The name comes from Wilms tumor, which is a childhood cancer which originates in the uh, kidneys. I think nine out of 10 kidney cancers in children is a Wilms tumor kidney cancer. Excuse me. So they show, here's a mouse xenograft model, of course. I, me personally, I, I don't put a lot of weight in these things too much these days. But here's their control with the, uh, where they infuse the um, uh, T cells into the mouse. And this is days post AML infusion. And so the cancer cells, of course, rise in their AML alone. In their negative control, this is the, the, this is the electroporation process with a TCR that's not against Wilms tumor 1. And you can see that those cells grow, of course, too. And here's their electroporation in orange. And in blood red is the um, LNP process. And they show us a, a statistical significance difference right here at 52 days. Excuse me. You're looking at the number of cells, number of AML cells per microliter of blood. So the LNP process kept it down way low, whereas the electroporation process, the cells, the cells started to climb back. This is a very important piece of data. And then they showed similar, like I showed before, they're looking at the um, translocated cells. So no edit, electroporation 0.175, they're showing here, just electroporation alone. <coughs> then simultaneous LNP or sequential LNP editing. And of course, the sequential is a lot better, much fewer translocated cells. All right, and this is, um, well, looking at cell expansion. So there's one thing that, you know, it, 
when I was reading about this this morning, I, I go back and I spend, you know, an hour or so, an hour or two looking at some old papers. I just do Google searches for various things and come up with old papers. And I'll spend some time doing that. And I came across this blood paper in 2012, um, Dubrovina et al. And I don't really understand these results when thinking about Intellia, what they're doing. But let's, I, I just want to show one thing about this with y'all and we'll call it a day. This paper, which I thought was interesting, uh, what they're doing here is, here's the title if you want to read it. I'll, I'll put a link in the description to it, is WT1 peptides have been known to induce tumorcidal T-cells are few. Not a lot of them will do it, they say. So in this present study, they evaluated T-cell responses of 56 healthy donors. All right to see how these 56 healthy donors, how their T cells responded to various peptides of WT1, All right? So they mapped the WT1 peptides eliciting responses in each individual, defining the immunogenic peptides. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for which peptides of WT1 are immunogenic in their hands to these healthy donors. Keep in mind, these are healthy donors, all right? These healthy donors do not have WT1 TCR T cells that Intellia is making. So the, what, what I wanted to show you was this. Excuse me while I scroll down to the discussion. I'm not going to go over all the data, but the discussion has some really good sentences in it. And I'm talking about right here. <coughs> Excuse me, let me take a drink. Ah. Uh. So an unexpected result of our epitope mapping studies was the lack of responses specific for previously reported WT1 peptide antigens other than the RMF peptide. So for example, no T cell responses were recorded against the SLG, VLD, or ALL peptides. So VLD, remember that, Intellius peptide is the VLD1. This is, this is residues number 37 through 45, as I said before, and we're just going to call it the VLD1, all right? No T cell responses were recorded against the VLD, all right, when the cells were sensitized with a complete pool of WT1. Um, and, but the other thing Right here, a striking example is the VLD peptide previously reported to be immunogenic based on binding algorithms when presented with HLA. This peptide, the VLD, did not elicit a response in any of the 12 donors when their T cells were sensitized with the whole pool. Did not. In contrast, the overlapping 38 to 46 LDF so Intellis is 37 to 45. Move everything over one, you're at 38 to 46. So it's LDF. The LDF peptide induced specific HLA-restricted interferon um, gamma T cells that were also leukemicidal in T cells cultured from 8 of 12. Right, So they got a response in 8 of 12 of the HLA donors. So, you know... <clears throat> Why did why did Intellia choose 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 this peptide? I don't know. I'm I'm just I, I don't quite understand th this result and why Intellia chooses this peptide. But Intellia is of course Intellia's T cell receptor is made specifically to go after this particular epitope. So I guess it doesn't really matter. But um, I don't know. That's just something that I saw that I'm thinking about and trying to figure out in my head. So. The main point of bringing up this video was the electroporation free reduced amount of translocations in this cell therapy. And I don't think, I, I don't know who else is using LMPs instead of electroporations to do their uh, CRISPR editing. I, I believe all of them are. I, I believe that is the status quo. Intellia said it was in their conference call. But of course, I don't look at all the companies, all the little companies, all the labs. Um, if you guys come across another company that's using LNP for their um, editing, by all means, let me know. 
I think it's important, and I think it'll, you're going to hear much more about this stuff in the not-too-distant future. So that's it for today. I hope you all have a good weekend, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.